Yeah, it's Dave again at TitleSearch.com and AFX Title. So what is a fraudulent document and how does it end up on a property um, title? Well, it could be, as a very basic example, a forged signature on a document. If you own a house and I sign your name on a deed and sell that house to somebody else, that's a fraudulent document. A forged signature uh, is an example of a fraudulent document. It may also be a document that is executed under duress or exploitation. If you own that house and I force you to sign over the deed uh, and there's no um, rational or reasonable um, circumstance for you to sell that house, that may create a fraud in a fraudulent document uh, even just under duress. It also could be incapacity. If somebody is incapacitated by uh, illness or disease or um, you know if they're in the hospital and they sign a document when they're not in full legal capacity or underage, that can create a fraudulent document. Uh, sometimes a power of attorney is used for somebody to sign another person's name if that power of attorney was limited in scope and did not allow the signator to, uh, let's say, do real estate, it's only a power of attorney to do, let's say, vehicle records. If they use that power of attorney to sign over a deed, that may be a fraudulent document because it's beyond the scope of that power of attorney. Any type of illegal activity or non-permitted transfers may be fraudulent. If, let's say, a property is owned by a corporation and the corporation needs internally um, a board of directors um, statement or some type of corporate resolution in order to transfer property, that doesn't mean that a president or an executive of the corporation could just sign over a deed and have it be uh, clear. That may be a fraudulent document. Uh, you got to remember that the county recorder that handles all these deeds cannot vet all of the documents that come across their desk. They don't know what a person's signature looks like. They may not know what the rules of that corporation are. So all they can do is look at a document. If on its face, it looks like a real document, it's got a signature, it's got a notary. Hey, guess what? As far as we're concerned, this looks real. Most counties have statement in their ordinances and their statutes which says, look, uh, it's prima facie evidence that if we get a document in and it appears on its face to be good, that we're going to record it as presented because the person making the document, um, you know, presentation recording to us uh, is representing that it's good. Uh, so if it turns out to be void, then what happens? Well, there's a few examples of how it can be removed. One is it could be canceled by a subsequent recording that says look refer back to this other document and that document is no longer valid it was found to be fraudulent the reason why you don't want to just remove it is because that place in the deed book is going to have a page number and if you just pull that page out then that index will still refer to a page and no one's going to know what that was you want to make sure you keep that original record of that uh, fraudulent document and then refer to it later so people can know okay here's the fraud here's the correction and both of those match up in the meantime while a fraudulent document is in place it may create a cloud on the title for property owners lenders lien holders and maybe even future buyers uh, one of the examples that we've seen of a uh, a very common fraudulent document is a release of mortgage. Uh, somebody has a mortgage on their house, they create a release of that mortgage, a cancellation of mortgage, and they have it all filled out, everything matches, and they sign it. Well, who knows what signature is supposed to be on a release from a large bank? You know, if a Bank of America probably has hundreds of executives that can sign a release, the county recorder is not going to know if it's a good signature. They get what looks like a release of mortgage. It's recorded. Now that mortgage appears to be cleared off title. The person can now sell that house free and clear, take the proceeds, and uh, they're off the hook. The mortgage is still there as far as the account needs to get paid, but the bank may have a difficult time for closing. That may become a slander of title issue later. Worst case scenario, the person who did it may be guilty of a crime and have to deal with that part of it. And uh, releasing a mortgage fraudulently sounds like a good idea, like why not? I can get away with this, but it's not going to stick in the long run. In fact, committing a crime uh, uh, in, financial, in the financial world, getting the money isn't the hard part. The hard part is making it stick. The easy part is actually doing the crime the hard part is keeping the money and making sure it doesn't get discovered. So fraudulent documents come up once in a while uh, in property record searches. Uh, it's a factor in what the status of the property is and who the ownership, liens, and mortgage status, if it's valid or not.